Today's word with Apostle Dr. S. M. Chirisa. Um, I don't know whether I'm the only one uh, who has faced in life situations uh, where things were not working. And um, where life takes what I call unwanted turns, uh, where sometimes you might even fall into a ditch. And sometimes it seems as if all the gains that you have been working for are reversed. And you wonder why. And more so, not only are you wondering why it's happening, uh, but you also wonder what you can do about it. Now, from our Christian point of view, when you are in trouble, half of us will quit coming to church. And I, I get so amazed and literally get so uh, flabbergasted and I, 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 I can't understand it. Why you are in trouble you don't come to the Lord. It's just, spiritually, it doesn't make any spiritual sense. Um, I think it is the height of stupidity, personally, where when things are not working, you desert the Lord. So the other half will pray. The other part of that half will bind. Uh, the other half will play the blaming game, saying some surrender. We have seen it. COVID came, put a lot of pressure on Christians, and some of the Christians did not come back. Some people who were Christians for a long time are now drinking beer. They have literally gone back. Um, and time and time again, you see people, when they are faced with challenges, they, how they react. So this message is important because it will save God your life. And in this church, we don't promise you that just because you are a Christian, all things at all times, they will be working. We have seen that there will be persecution for righteousness. You will be under pressure. Tell your neighbor you will be under pressure. Now, it's not a negative confession. It's a spiritual reality. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And this teaching is meant, therefore, and designed to help you to know what to do when you enter such situations. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Some of you, you might be in that situation right now, and uh, we, we are all in different seasons of our lives. But I want to teach you what I call a Bible response. And I want us to go to the book of Haggai, Chapter 1, verses 5 to 7. If you can put those verses together. If you can put those verses together. It would be good for you to read the book of Haggai. Um, Haggai is a prophet. He's not a major prophet, but he's a prophet who God raises during the time when Zerubbabel was the governor uh, in Israel. And, and, and there were quite a number of prophets that were operating at that time. But this is what the, the word of God says. Now, therefore, now therefore, thus says the Lord, Consider your ways. Everybody says, consider your ways. You have sown much, but bring in little. You eat, but do not have enough. You drink, but are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. He who earns wages ends wedges to put into a bag with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, 
consider your ways. Now, you can read the whole. It's a very small chapter. We could have read it. Uh, this was a group of people that were taking care of their own needs and neglecting the needs of the house of God. But I'm not talking about that as a way of us building or making you have a guilty trip. But I want you to understand that negative things were happening to these people. When the end wages, it's like as if they were putting that money in a hole. It means they would lose it. It wouldn't make any sense. Everything that they were trying, it wasn't working. Things wasn't working. And God then comes to them and says, you must consider your ways. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So the first thing that you must do when things are not working in your life, you must consider your ways. Say, I must consider my ways. Hallelujah. So the word consider your ways, it means to think carefully about something. And typically, before making a decision, you must consider your ways. It also means you must be a person that is thinking or what I call consequence oriented person. I have always said, and to those who have heard me, who have been with us for some time, you realize that I say that your, the measure of your wisdom is measured by how much time you can think ahead based on what you are doing now. So some people have got one day wisdom. Give me the bowl of soup that I may be full. But tomorrow he's going to be hungry. But you don't care about the consequences. So in that instance, your wisdom is a one-day wisdom. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But God expects us to have an internal wisdom, knowing that whatever we are doing now has got consequences. Five years, ten years, twenty years. What we are doing now, this ministry is turning 11 years in, on the 4th of March. What we have been doing the past 10 years has got consequences and is a foundation of what we are, are becoming. And some people might see us today and like what we are, but they do not know the kind of sacrifices that we have done in the past. I was talking to one guy, and I was saying, there was a year me and Pastor D, we paid rent when, when we were still in Kaguvi for three years, and the rent was 2,800. We paid it out of our pockets. It also means, consider your ways. It means, it means you must scrutinize. You must scrutinize situations. You must observe. You must take stock, and you must pay attention. Say to your neighbor, pay attention to your ways. Because we are very quick to, to bind, to, to, to pray, to blame, but we never consider our ways. One thing that I can tell you for sure is that God is not unjust. God is not what? Unjust. We read the last time that God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself does not tempt anybody with evil. Are you hearing what I'm saying? which means if something is going wrong in your life, it can never be, the, 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 the error is not on the side of God because God does not make errors. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why God is, God is saying here, I'm giving you that you should consider your ways. Most of the times when things are not working, these are some of the things that we have seen over time and in our own lives when things were not working for us. Number one, there is a bad decision. There's a what? A bad decision. One would have made a bad decision. It might be a bad decision for yourself, for your family, for your company, for the church, but you have made a bad decision. Number two, one of the reasons that causes people to go into uh, uh, bad situations or a struggle or a painful situations is that there is disobedience. There is disobedience to the word of God blatant disobedience to the commandments of God or a blunted disobedience to a rhema word that would have come from you, uh, would have come from the Lord. So there is blatant 
disobedience with things that we are reading, things that we are reading in the book of Proverbs, things that are coming, instructions from the word of God, and you decide to disobey them. Or there is a rhema word coming, and you disobey. Or there is ignorance. Ignorance. Either a person does not know, but in the realm of the spirit, ignorance is not a is not a pardonable sin. If you, if you make an error and you don't know, you still go to jail. Not knowing something that you are supposed to know does not make you uh, 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 exempt from the punishment. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And in time past, we have taught that when you are ignorant, that's why the Bible says, my people are destroyed for lack of Knowledge. So ignorance will cause you to be destroyed. Ignorance will cause you to be in painful situations. Say to your neighbor, I hope you are not ignorant. The number four, what can also lead into difficult problems is bondage. Purely demonic bondage. Where demons are playing their own free will and are coming to disturb your life. And, and these are demons that can arise from all kinds of sectors. They can be familial uh, demons, city, whatever the case might be. And sometimes you would have opened the door to demonic activity in your life. Because a case without any cause will not land. In any case, it is activated and it is carried out by demonic powers. Am I talking to somebody? The last thing that can cause people to struggle is pride. Everybody say pride. So pride, the Bible says, a haughty spirit goes before a fall. A haughty spirit and pride comes before destruction. So whenever you are proud, you know that your end is going to be in trouble because you have activated a pathway that reminds God of the devil. The first one who had pride in his heart. The iniquity of Satan was pride that I am going to rise above God and become like him and be above him. That was the iniquity. Devil did not commit adultery, did not commit fornication, he did not steal anybody. The thing that caused him to become the devil and to be kicked out of heaven was pride. So most of us, some people are so proud and, and, and think about pride that you cannot see it. Pride has got nothing to do with your money. Some, pride has got nothing to do with poverty. They, some of the Proud people that I've seen are poor. For example, you want to have a wedding, some broke uncle in the rural areas will say, One funny, I was on the woods, I was into school. Yeah, that's pride. And all of us, we have dealt with those kind of people, proud and can do nothing. Yet they have not contributed anything to the funeral, no, no money, no nothing. They are a cost, but are just making it difficult. I'm just telling you that you must consider your ways and check yourself whether these things are not the ones that are bringing this struggle in your life. Am I talking to somebody? I want you to know that prayer will not get you what knowledge is supposed, is designed to get you. So sometimes as Christians, we want to use certain Christian disciplines to subjugate and to um, twist God into our own will, yet we have not considered our ways. So if you need a knowledge, prayer is not going to change. Are you here? It's not going to change that thing. So there are things that are changed by prayer, but there are things that are changed by knowledge. There are things, if pride brought it, then you are going to have to need humility. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If it is a bad decision that brought it, then you have to start making good decisions. Am I talking to somebody? You cannot use fasting to overlook ignorance. You can't use religiousness to overcome bondage. Am I talking to somebody? So number one, when things are going wrong, what must you do? You must consider your ways. Consider your ways. Number two, this is what the next thing that you do. Let's go to Isaiah 1 verse 19 to 20. We need to move a bit fast so that we can finish on time. Isaiah 1, verse 19 and 20. Is this helping somebody tonight? Please have this in your heart 
so that whenever you, 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 things are not working, you are able to consider your ways. Isaiah 1 from verse 19 to 20 then reads, If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, so the opposite of willing and obedience is refusing and rebelling. If you are obedient, you will eat the what? The good. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Who wants good in their lives? Mm, I, I want a good car. I want good marriage. I want good money. I want a good job. I want a good church. I want a good mic. I want a good conference. But I must be what? Willing and obedient. If you refuse, God does not hide it. Could, if you refuse, teacher, I want to just say, could you minimize it? Now listen to what the Bible says. If you refuse, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Who has spoken this? Who has spoken? Who has spoken? You shall be devoured by the what? By the sword. Give me the, 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 the message Bible. Let's see what, how that crazy, crazy Bible child says. If you are willing, if you willingly obey, you will feast like kings. Mm, I like that. But if you are willful and stubborn, you will die like dogs. Yes. That's right. God says so. Give me the Amplified. Let's see what the Amplified says. <coughs> so, you must consider what have you not been willing to do. And some of you have not been willing, for example, to pay your tithe. Some of you have not been willing to come to church. Some of you have not been willing to just discipline yourself to do the things. Some of you today is our fasting day. You did not even fast. You are not willing to fast. You're not willing to fast. Yet you know that fasting, there are certain things that you, 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 you overcome because of fasting. Because you're not willing, you shall be devoured by the sword. Yeah. Says the same thing is amplified. What have you not been obedient to? Certain instructions. You have not been obedient to those. Now a lot of people will say, I saw one, one guy wearing a t-shirt today. I have left church, but I have not left God. Hmm? I have left church, but I have not left God. You are out of order. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You will hear when you church, Mazona and Scooter as a church, drunk or free floater. You are out of order. You get what I'm saying? God is the one who is building his church. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God is building his what? His church. Now, I know some of you, you go to my interdict. God, Jesus did not say, I'm building an interdict. I am building my church. And a lot of Christians are out of order because they are doing activities that are not in line with the plan and the purposes of God. Am I talking to somebody? What have you ignored? What have you ignored? Go to Deuteronomy 28, verse 45. Am I talking to somebody? So when you get angry or when you get mad, are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't become a rebel and free floating. You have to have a church. It's better for you to move church, but you must be in church. Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? All right. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 45. Moreover, all these cases shall come upon you and pursue you and overtake you until you are destroyed because you did not obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded. I want you to understand that these words were not written to my Amalekites. These words were not written to my Hittites and Perizzites and, and Jebusites. They were written to Israelites. They were written to Christians. God was speaking to his people. Not people who are... So the Bible is not written to unbelievers. The Bible was written to believers. <laughs> it's funny, is if you ever thought about it, that the Bible was not written to unbelievers. When God was saying all this, he was talking to his people who he saved, crossed the Red Sea, 
did miracles for them. But he's saying that if you do this, these cases shall come upon you. And I always say when you read the scriptures, it is God speaking to you. Am I talking to somebody here? So this is an instruction to believers. And I want you to know that when Jesus went, that you must go into scripture. That it is written, before the New Testament was written, the only word of God was the Old Testament. Genesis to Malachi, before the Old Testament. So when Paul was saying, we must go back to scripture, he was not talking of 2 Corinthians chapter Chagut. He was actually talking about the Old Testament. Have you ever thought about that? Yeah, yes. So some of these books were written 70 years later, 40 years later, like the book of Mark. The book of Mark was written by John Mark, the one that was working with Paul and Barnabas, who caused Barnabas and Paul to have a fight and split because they said, but this guy, Paul was saying, this guy is useless. And Barnabas goes because he's called the son of encouragement. He then grows, but later we see and say, send Mark to me, for he is profitable. Because Anga Akura. So there are some people in this church that are unprofitable right now. But the reason why we don't kick you out of this church and lock you out of this church, we are hoping at some point you'll be a mark. You will be profitable. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So to those who are profitable now, we are not going to kick out the babies. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are going to walk with those babies because we all mature at different times and at different seasons. Hello? Hello? So just because you are matured now, it does not mean that I have to rasa the kid who is too pewing and peeping in their pants. As their father and as a pastor, I will keep you both. The mature ones. But just say to your neighbor, I, I, I hope you are not the one that pastor is keeping with peewing and peeping in the jacket. <coughs> All right. I, I, I don't want to go into that direction. Let's stick to what the word of God says here. Okay. So I want you to know that these cases will come upon you if you don't do the word of God. You must be willing and obedient. What does the word of God say in your life? How much of the word are you obeying? Is this making any sense? Number three, things, why things go wrong? Loving the wrong things. Loving the wrong things. Go to first, uh, to James chapter 1, verse 13 and verse 18 to 16. Let no one say when he is tempted, I'm tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desires are conceived, it gives back to sin, and when sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death, do not be deceived, my brethren, my beloved brethren. Loving the wrong things. When you decide to do something that has enticed you. Let's go to First Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. It talks about, we know it's a popular scripture. For the love of money is the root of all evil. But it's, keep, it's, it's giving us a, a, a principle. For which, some, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves with many sorrows. With many sorrows. Some people be, uh, no, they decided to become prostitutes because of money. Some people be, decided to become armed robbers because of money. Some people decided to become false prophets, false teachers because of money. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. So loving the wrong things, loving the wrong things will entice you. What have you loved that has enticed you into your own destruction? Sometimes you might even love a, a, a wrong friend. You love that friend so much that you are willing to sin just to keep a friendship. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Somebody uh, told me, uh, gave me, um, sent a message to me. It's a patient. I don't even know the person. So I can say, Ah, kubasa kwedu kurukupuwa ma ma ma. What's it called? Mari. For people who have post-traumatic stress disorder, so inini and ina angu, but in the magandunyora report, tinozo share mariachu, do and that a good name is better than man. Sagadi kana usi na post-traumatic stress disorder, I will write with a awuna. 
with a bow with a fit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But I will tell you that guy is going to get somebody who's going to write that report for the love of money, loving the wrong things. But the Bible says a good name is better than money. A good name is better than money. Number four, what is, what is the wisdom of God saying about your situation? So what is wisdom? Wisdom is knowing what to do and doing it. Wisdom is knowing what, uh, is knowing what and how to pray and praying for it. Wisdom is knowing the correct decision and taking it. Wisdom is knowing the consequence of every move you make and choosing the best outcome. Wisdom is knowing the will of God and doing it. Wisdom is, on in, is your path to life and success. Let's go to Proverbs 2, from verse 6 to 16. Pro, Proverbs 2, from verse 6 to 16. For the Lord gives wisdom, and out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is, he is a shield to those who walk upright. God is a what? Is a shield. If you are not walking upright, the shield is gone. The shield is gone. He guards the path of justice and preserves the way of the saints. Let's go on. Let's move quickly. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity and good and every good path. When wisdom, en when wisdom enters your heart and, and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, discretion will preserve you and understanding will keep you. If wisdom does not enter your heart, you will not be kept. Nothing will preserve you. Let's go on. To deliver you from the ways of evil. So purpose of wisdom is to deliver you. If you hate wisdom, you will be delivered to evil. Purpose of wisdom is to deliver you from evil. Are you hearing what I'm saying? For the man who speaks perverse, from the man who speaks perverse things, which means when you are wise, you are going to, you are going, God is going to preserve you from people who speak stupid things and give you mapran to destroy you and to destroy your house, to destroy your company, to destroy... You know, there are some people who come and tell you, good. Are you getting what I'm saying? Perverse things. Perverse things. <laughs> As a wisdom, there's something wrong with From those who leave the path of righteousness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice in doing evil, who delight in perversity of the wicked, of wicked, of the wicked whose ways are crooked, and those who are, who are devious in their paths, to deliver you from immoral women, from the seductress who flatters with, the, with her words. That's what, that is the purpose of wisdom. So wisdom will preserve you. We are not called wisdom city for nothing. We should be preserved with the way we think because we know the right way of God. Am I talking to somebody? So you must love wisdom. Wisdom must enter your heart. That's why I always say every day, pray for the spirit of wisdom. God, give me wisdom. Put your right hand on your head and say, Father, give me wisdom. I am intrigued by Bishop Tudor. He's 66 this year, and he says every day, Every day, and he, has, he got saved in 1972. Most of you who are here were not, were not even born. I was not even born again. I was not even born. Not even born again. Not, not even talk about being born again. I was not even born when he got born again. And he says, I pray for wisdom every day. You were one of the last time you prayed for wisdom. Go to Psalms 32, verse 6 to 7. Psalms 32, verse 7 to 8. Is this helping somebody? Is, is this Bible study helping somebody? What to do when things are not going well? Psalms 32, verse six, uh, 7 to 8. You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with songs of deliverance. Seller, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. 
I will guide you with my eye. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So God is saying, if you stay in the hiding place, that's why I said, I am amazed that when people are in trouble, they run away from God, and yet they expect to be delivered. Most people actually perpetuate their struggle because they remove themselves from the hiding place or the secret place. There was a guy from Nigeria who said to me, especially when it comes to money, you are either in a secret cult or you are in a secret place. Either you've got the blessing or wakaromba. You, there's, you, there's no or else average. Am, am I talking to somebody? Hello? And here in this church, we have decided to be in the secret what? Place. That secret place is our hiding place. So if you can ask Pastor D, when things are not working well, I go into the secret place, I seek God more, I hear the word of God, I build my faith, I go, I never run away from God because things are, are not working. Am I talking to somebody? Tell your neighbor, from today, you don't run away from God. When things are not working, go to God. Because when you make him your, 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 your hiding place, he shall, you, he shall preserve you from the trouble. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He shall surround you with songs of deliverance. Hallelujah. And, he, and Selah, now when you, when you do that, instructions shall come. So your deliverance is in the realm of instructions. So God will start to, will start to instruct you with things that you must do. And that is the purpose of wisdom. And most of us, when you are in trouble, when you come to us, there's a guy who came to us and he said, and said okay, you, you need to do this, you need to do this. So I said, no, say, baby, and this good. Say, baby, and this good. And that's like, I cannot help you. Because I can only help you by, 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 by biblically or biblically. If you don't want that help, then I can, you are not helpable. Why are you here? Are you hearing what I'm saying? I shall what? Instruct you. So God rescues you from your problems through instructions. And those instructions are wisdom instructions. Am I talking to somebody? So if you look at, at Moses, his deliverance, uh, Yohanna Israel uh, was, was through instructions. Gideon was through instructions. Today I was studying on how you can activate, um, I'm going to preach it maybe next week, how you can activate the supernatural in your life. And we looked at Gideon. Gideon was given an instruction. If you read in Gideon, he was in, given instructions in, uh, in Judges 6 that Gideon, go and destroy the altars of Baal in your father's house. And he was afraid. And he went with 10 people and he destroyed them in the, in, in the middle of, of, of the night. He got an instruction. And this was before he went to battle, which he won and became a judge in Israel. So which means certain things will not happen until you carry out certain instructions. Am I talking? Am I talking to somebody? Or else you are going to continue in that trouble. Some of you, you are still holding on to my chair at Wakapua, to my Mbiwa, to my Chagudi, to my, to my to whatever, to my food at Wakapua, and Mbiwa. You are coming to church, but you still hold. I had one guy who had these things, Musili. Material red, material black, material chakuti, nonzi, mudonzo, ne chakuti, but still coming to church. God is speaking to you. You have to destroy those things. You have to destroy those things that your forefathers put faith in and put faith in God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And sometimes by keeping those things, I've seen some people, that's why I don't fight with demons if they don't want to go. And the reason is, I've seen that they will waste my time, and sometimes, usually, when it's happening like that, there are things, and they have got possession of things which keep that demonic power legal in that family or in that person. Am I talking to somebody? So when you say, cast out, those people will be holding, and you'll be so amazed by how many people of this age and of this generation have doubled into, into cultism and traditional one time in a ceiling each every every one meter pangapane every one meter in the ceiling and there you are you're saying you're a Christian you don't come for prayer you don't fast some people are going to farm, but I got to sing it. You know, 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 you know,
uri mushonga you must destroy those things you must destroy those things the other reason why people struggle is demonic resistance let's go to first thessalonians 2 verse 18 first thessalonians 2 verse 18 is this helping somebody tonight Therefore, we wanted to come to you, even I, Paul, time and time again. But Satan hindered us. Now, this is Paul who wrote the book of Ephesians. Are you hearing him say? And he tells you, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness in the heavenly places. He's telling you, put on the chagut chagut. But he, Paul, knowing all those things, he was hindered, not once, time and again. By who? Which means God wanted him to go. But Satan Agamira Mir. I want you to understand, good. We are not playing with a with a with a cheap devil here. This guy is this is Paul. This is Paul of Damascus. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Who in Acts chapter 9? After you know, the killing Stephen, he was now going on his way here to Damascus. He meets Jesus. The Bible says, good, a bright light, right here, Paul fell and he, and, 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 and he spoke to Jesus directly. And he says, Paul, Paul, why, do you, why are you persecuting me? And Paul said, who are you, Lord? I don't know who told him, <laughs> the Jesus, the Lord. But I think when you see the Lord, you will know, good, did you? We are good. Uh, we, are you hearing what I'm saying? Hello? Saw so Jesus. Spoke to Jesus. The Bible then says, good. He then went to Cornelius. I did go to the, uh, uh, to the house. No, no, no. Ananias. Not Cornelius, sorry. To the house of Ananias. And Ananias also saw a vision. He was afraid, but Akayenda was, was given an instruction by God. And the Bible says he laid his hands on Paul. Paul received his vision. Scales dropped out of his eyes and he received the Holy Ghost same time by laying on of hands <laughs> and this is the Paul Muna Thessalonians yes who is saying to Satan hindered me so there are demonic hindrances are you hearing what I'm saying and so there is a way to deal with satanic hindrances. Let's go to James 4, verse 27. Therefore, submit yourself to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee away. He didn't say resist the devil, and he will flee away. The first thing is submission to God. Ask your neighbor, are you submitted to God? So submission to God is not to say, Father, I submit. You know how it is. Can I tap in the zone? I submit. Oh, my mother and I submit. Physical is not submission. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh, what I'm a Christian. My Christ, my Christians are drama queens. Uh, 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 uh. You guys can pull some drama. Hey. I'm not saying that we should not be expressive of our sorrow. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But we can pull some drama. Submission to God is submitting to his word. The Bible says God has exalted this word above his name. If you are not submitted to his word, you are not submitted to God. So you cannot resist. That's why you are not able to resist my demons that you are supposed to resist that are hindering you. Because you cannot resist. There are some guys in the book of Acts who tried to to deal with some demons. And the demon says, Jesus we know, 
Paul will know who are you. I know who who are you. You want to bind me now? 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 You want to Listen, ladies and gentlemen, you must put in your, yourself in a position where you get spiritual authority. So, I want you to see where spiritual authority comes. The, 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 centurion, the centurion with Jesus. Jesus, the centurion comes to Jesus. Come and heal my servant, he's ill. Jesus says, I want to come to your house. The servant, the servant says, I am unworthy. There is no need for you to come to my house. I am a person under authority. So he says, I'm a person who is submitted to under authority, submission. I know good if you say a word, it will be done. And Jesus says, wow, in all of Israel, I've never seen such great faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But it's because the centurion understood that when you are submitted to authority, you can release and have access to authority. You, you must be submitted to authority also. So you can be a member of this church. And the leaders and order, we are not nine. And we don't go, we are not going to It's lack of submission. We are going to pray. And I do it when I'm going to pray. The Lord has to speak to me. Imagine the Lord is not going to speak to you. Are you hearing him say? The Lord said, And a lot of people are not submitted. And yet they want to go choir prayer. Father, to sunga Yet the power comes from worshiping God. The power comes from praising God. The power comes, the power is not in the binding, the power is in the submission. Am I talking to somebody here? A lot of people are perpetuating their problems because they are not submitted. To God. Guys, I'm telling you kingdom secrets right now. This is a good service. I wish many people were here, but you guys are, you have been given the secrets of the kingdom. Am I talking to somebody? Never struggle again. Never struggle again. Let's go to Judges. Judges 6. Verse 25. It's what I talked about. Yeah. Yeah. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said to him, take your father's young bull and second bull of seven years old and tear down the altar of bow that your father has and cut down the wooden image that is beside it. This was an instruction. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Some of you, my kapua, my jackets, my chakuti, to mandiro, get rid of them. Go and buy yourself a proper and you keep it in the hand. The guy for a number young who told who goes out in the energy. Yaka Tauru Wachi. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hello, and the Gapu and Mutu Sima Pamusa Pango. Some people won't go on a mutu as Mutu Uchukura. My problems are I could. The day they cut the tree, my problem ceased. There is so much witchcraft in Africa. Let's not act as if we are. I know that we are salads and we are manos, or we are now in a Tanma master's degree, but my friend, those things, they don't scare the devil. And witchcraft is real. Witchcraft is real. Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? You paint those things. Buddha, they say, I know not. Better brand new MB my diggers. Or wherever. We keep Reggie and be your snap pick. What do you want to keep that MB? Somebody's getting delivered tonight. 
ani ka hembe ka ke ka skipper ka singa pekeke uri ka eh ka se ka nda ka puwa pa pa ka uto uri ku zoti and you are struggling uri ku bind i bind i bind go and destroy the symbols of witchcraft in your house some of you were given that's how you resist the devil are you hearing what i'm saying so the take home message tonight is number 1 when things go wrong seek god don't run away from god never run away from god number 2 when things go wrong seek the wisdom of god it's your way for out of that situation and salvation number 3 you must learn how to deal with the devil get uh, get rid of demonic ornaments and symbols and altars that you have been given and that are in your house that you are keeping some of you before you got born again mangamena ma pastor wakapo wakadombo kamwari wakapo wakadombo and you still have it five years room christ but you chinako pozo hands wangu ka rasa chete wangu ka rasa chete and so kama ka hat kari kuchika nako kadombe ka let us bath souls let us chaku 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 throw them away kana uri kuchika bring them to zbena Hello bring we are meant to and bend those things because you must walk in full deliverance in full deliverance Father I have preached to your people now may your word do what you have sent it to do to deliver your people from trouble you say the righteous men may fall seven times but will still rise i pray let those who have fallen rise let them not remain down but rise and those that are in holes those that are in ditches father send your wisdom send your word to deliver them for you said you sent your word and he healed their diseases send your word to perform to heal them from all their troubles and to all the wickedness and all demonic orchestration father we send a word we resist the devil say i resist the devil say i resist you satan i resist you in my life in the name of jesus we resist you we resist you over this church we resist you over my own house we resist you over our business we resist you over each and every individual that is here we resist you we resist you we resist you in the name of jesus your hands off the righteous ones your hands off in the name of jesus father redeem your people let your glory come upon them let the promises of god be amen and yes in their lives let them rise and shine in the name of jesus let their season come in this year of no limits let them experience your power your glory in jesus mighty name we have prayed and everybody says Amen.